Welcome to Pipes Around the House. In this video, I'm going to show you how to remove a radiator from a wall without draining down your central heating system. I'll cover the type of valves you may encounter, how to turn the valves off, how to disconnect them from your radiator, and how to physically remove your radiator from the wall. Then I'll show you how to put your radiator back on the wall, reconnect the pipework, bleed the radiator, and repressurize your central heating system so that it's all up and running back to normal. So the first thing we need to do is close off our valves and we should have one valve on each side of the radiator but first of all we need to know what type of valve we've got. On the majority of radiators on one side of the radiator you're likely to have a thermostatic radiator valve and that looks like this. When closing this off is very simple on the side here you will see a number and you want to rotate this clockwise or to the right until we get to zero. Just turning it like that and once we get to zero that is now turned off. Now back to the original radiator, this type of valve is called a lock shield valve. Now in this situation, we don't actually have a rotating dial on the top, we have a loose plastic cap, and they can come either in this form like that, which can just be pulled off easily, or sometimes you'll find these have a little screw that are holding them in place, you undo the screw, and then in the same way, just pull that off the top. And then inside, you'll see this little metal bit there and that's the bit we need to turn to close off this particular valve. And before we do that I just want to show you the same valve on the other side and how it can sometimes look slightly different. So on this side of the radiator we've also got a lock shield valve but this one has actually got a knob on top. Now if we just pull the knob off you can see it looks exactly the same but with this one we've actually got a little knob or a little cap with a groove that that metal bit sits in and we can use this to actually close and open the valve. So I'm just going to place that back on top for now push it into place. If you have one of these, all we need to do is rotate this to the right again, clockwise that way, until we stop, and that means that it's actually closed off, just like this. There we go, that'll go no further, so it's closed. Now because I'm lucky enough to have one of these caps, I'm actually gonna pull this off and use it on the valve on the other side of the radiator. So back to the other side of the radiator, same type of valve, I'm just gonna push this cap on top and use this to close it up. If you don't have one of these caps, all you need to do is take a little adjustable spanner like that, tighten it up onto the valve, like so, and you can then use this to either go clockwise or anti-clockwise to close or open. Now one more bit of advice, when you have a lock shield valve like this, with the loose cover, the chances are this has been put in place because this particular radiator has been what's known as balanced. And that's basically that it works in harmony with the rest of the radiators in the house to heat your house properly. So if a plumber has already balanced this radiator, this will be set to a particular point that we want to keep. So when closing this off, it's a good idea to count the number of turns. So when we put the radiator back on at the end of the video, we can return it anti-clockwise in the other direction, the same number of turns, ensuring that it's back to exactly where we took off. So like I said, using my cap, I'm gonna place that over the top. There we go, and I'm gonna count. One, two, that's just under three turns to close it. So I'm gonna make a note of that, and then we can remember that for later on in the video. Okay, so now with both valves closed, it's now time to release the radiator from the valve. And the way we do this is by undoing or loosening this nut here. And the important thing to remember with this is that the thread is actually on the valve, not on the radiator. So we need to turn this anti-clockwise, but it's anti-clockwise facing outwards. So if we had the spanner here, we'll be turning this way because we're obviously unwinding it off the thread on the valve. Now this is a common mistake that many people make because when this is tightened up, you can't see where the thread is. If you make the mistake of thinking the thread is on this side of the valve, then instead of undoing it, you'll be tightening it back up, which could strip the thread and cause you all sorts of problems. At this point, it's also a good idea to get some old rags underneath because we're probably gonna get a bit of excess water running out. I've also got a jug and a bowl. And then this time taking a larger adjustable spanner. I'm going to place that on the nut. I'm just going to tighten that on. At this point, it's a good idea to have another spanner. I say it's a good idea, it's essential really. You can stick that onto the valve right there, like that. Because as you rotate this, it's going to try and twist the valve this way and your pipe work off the wall. And you've got to watch that because it could bend your plumbing and your copper tube or pipe, which you don't want. So by doing this, we can just hold that in place, stop it twisting. 
There we go. So I've released the pressure. That nut is now loose. So I'm going to get that jug under there. And you can see there's not much water coming out there at the moment. Now that's because it's creating a vacuum. So now we're going to do a nut at the top or the bleed valve that will allow air into the radiator and allow this water to flow out. Now on more modern radiators, we can either use a flat bladed screwdriver or we can use the traditional method of a radiator bleed key. And this is probably more suitable on uh, older radiators as well where they don't have this type of valve. Now I've set the camera up to show you that when I undo this and let the air in, the water will start running out down there. So keep your eye out down here. So just locate the key into place like that. We'll turn anti-clockwise, get my cloth up the back of there, like that. And you can hear that air going in and you can see that starting to drip. So there we go, we've released the vacuum. If I just pull that valve out like that, you can see it's starting to come out and make a bit of a mess. It's a bit of a difficult one, this. Because whilst I want the water out, we'll do it in a controlled manner, or otherwise it'll be spraying my walls and my floor, which I don't want. I'll just close that off, pour my water back into my bowl like that. Okay, so I've just pulled that away now. On mine, I was able to do it. That is actually going all over the floor. Lovely. This particular example, I'm fortunate enough that this copper pipe just came out of the wall. I say fortunate, I've just pulled the pin out of the wall, so that'll be fun getting it back in. But sometimes they're very rigid and you've just got to try and make the best of a bad situation, wedge it apart, get a few towels in there. You're going to make a mess. Just damage limitation more than anything. Right now, just to help with that flow, I'm just going to undo this valve a bit more now. There we go, just let plenty of air in. So I'm happy with that now, that that can just drip into the bowl. Take that away. I'm just going to get a little rag and clean up any excess by there so we haven't got any mess. Now I'm happy just to leave the rag under there to collect the last few drips while I take the bowl and the jug to the other valve and do that. I'm sure we're going to get a little spurt of water out of there. So same again on this side. We're rotating anti-clockwise, but whilst facing out, because the thread, remember, is on this valve. So we're going to be turning this way. Then don't forget to get your other spanner. On this side, we don't have the square bit we had on the other one. So you've just got to improvise a bit. But if you just tighten that up onto any part of the valve. And where I turn this one anti-clockwise, I just want to resist in the other direction, like that. And that'll stop the pipe work bending. There we go, that's come free. So I've undone that. Same again, put the jug under there just in case. There we go, nothing's actually coming out of that one, so that's perfect. So we've got rid of most of the water. So the next thing I'm going to do now is take the radiator and this will just lift off the brackets, making sure these valves are prized backwards out of the way so we don't catch them on the pipework. I'm now going to lift the radiator up and I'm going to tilt it up and pour the remaining water into that bowl. You can see all that black and gunk from all the inhibitor just dripping out of the bottom there, like that. There we go, and that's the lot. So I'm just going to go and store my radiator outside under a cover. If you're going to leave yours indoors, just remember you might get a few drops coming out of either side of the radiator, and that will stain your carpet if you've got it on carpet or on the floor. So just make sure you've got a few... Um, cloths or something like that under each end. The next thing to do is get rid of the water from your radiator. Now don't forget this has got inhibitor in it, which isn't very pleasant. So when you get rid of this, funnel it into a bottle and dispose of it safely at your local CA site, not down the drain. So now you're ready to do whatever it is you want to do behind the radiator. For me, it's just simply painting the wall, two coats of paint, and then I can get the radiator back on. Before I do that, I just want to quickly show you these brackets. So if you take a quick look at these, they're very simple. They screw to the wall there. They're like a bit of angle bracket. And then you've got this little slot there, this little slot there. And the back of your radiator will have some brackets that interlock into those. Just to show you the back of the radiator, these are the brackets, just flat metal plates. Like I said, these bits here just slot into those grooves on the bracket we just saw on the wall. It's really that simple. Okay, so a few hours have passed. I've actually been fortunate enough to get a couple of coats of paint on the wall. Still a little bit tacky, but I'm in a rush, so it's time to get this radiator back on the wall. And first of all, we do that by locating the brackets on the radiator I showed you earlier 
into these slots on the brackets on the wall. And to do this, we literally just pick the radiator up and try to hold it into place. Now when you do that, just make sure by pulling on the bottom, that the radiator has located into all the little slots because sometimes you'll catch the top two and not the bottom two. And if you pull that, it will flex outwards. So just make sure all four slots are located. The next thing to do is check that the valves line up. I can see already that my radiator is too far to the right. So I'm gonna do this just by gently nudging it over to the left until I got it central between the valves and then we can reconnect the valves. So you can see there, just by nudging it across a touch, I've managed to line that up. These all fit nicely now and slot into the nuts. So I'm happy I can now tighten that back up. Now remember what we said earlier, we now need to tighten this facing outwards away from the radiator onto that thread. So clockwise, this way, like that. So I'm gonna start by doing that one up by hand. I'm gonna go over to the other one and do that one up by hand, making sure they're all located in position and feel comfortable. Then we can tighten them up with a spanner. So again, facing outwards from the radiator, we rotate clockwise, locating that nut onto the thread of the valve. Okay, now both of those fit nicely. That's nice and vertical. My pipe's not flexing, so I know my radiator is in exactly the right position. Taking your adjustable spanner, put it on, start to tighten. And as before, just take another spanner, place that over this part of the valve, or anywhere you can get some purchase, and just pull in the opposite direction. That'll not only help tighten it up, but it'll stop this pipe flexing and pulling backwards and breaking. So by locating this spanner on that valve, I'm gonna apply a bit of pressure in this direction, and then rotate this one clockwise that way, applying pressure against each other. And don't over tighten this, just do a sort of till it's tight and then a gentle nip like that, and that's enough. You can see this valve's got that flat section there, so I can actually use the spanner to stop that turning by there like that. Just tighten that up. And again, with this spanner, I'm sort of rotating that way, so I'm going in the opposite direction. Again, stopping this valve from flexing outwards, but at the same time, it's helping to tighten this up. If I hold it at that angle, I get a bit more leverage. So again, do it up till it's tight and then just a gentle nip like that. So the next important thing to do is either get your small flat bladed screwdriver, or in my case, I'm using the bleed valve key and just tighten up this valve for the minute. That way, when we open the valves down on the bottom of the radiator and let the water in, it's not all gonna go flying straight out. We can loosen it off and control it properly. So just again, rotating that clockwise. Right, so that's tight. So if we go back to this valve here, if you remember earlier, we closed it off and it took just under three full turns. So I'm gonna rotate it anti-clockwise, which will open it up, and I'm gonna do it just under three turns. And that's gonna put it exactly where it was earlier. That means if the radiator was balanced before we took it off the wall, it will be balanced again when we set it all back up in a minute. So just using a marking point on there, I'm gonna rotate one, and obviously, before I carry on counting, you can hear that water just surging into that radiator. That's two. Now three full turns there, so I'm just gonna go back a tiny bit, and that is now exactly where it was before. So I'm gonna pull that cap off, and then I'm gonna put this one back over the top. And that just moves loosely like that, and that stops anyone turning it and altering where the valve is. So coming back to the other side, this valve was just opened right up. So I'm gonna put this cap over that valve like that. So I'm just gonna rotate this valve anti-clockwise until it doesn't go any further. And generally what's good practice with valves is don't crank them completely tight. That's tight there, so I'm just gonna go back slightly the other way. That sort of helps prevent them from seizing up. For this next bit, we're gonna need an old rag because we're gonna bleed the radiator. And we do this by undoing this bleed valve using our bleed valve key, or again, the little flat bladed screwdriver. Now, when we undo this, there's gonna be air surges out. It's gonna draw water up through the radiator. And when it's full, water will spurt out. You'll probably get a bit of air at first, a bit of spitting. And when you get a good, steady stream of water, you know it's full. The one thing to point out with this is once I'm half full, I'm actually gonna go upstairs now Look at the pressure of the boiler because as we fill this up, the pressure of the central heating system will drop and we need to make sure that that's maintained. I'll show you that in a minute. 
And with mine there, for whatever reason, that whole nut just started coming loose. That was a bit seized. If you get that, just put your span on there, make sure that nut there is tight. That's the metal bit there. And then hold in your spanner on the nut like that. We can then take the bleed key and loosen it off. Not sure where that's stuck, probably where it hasn't been used. There we go. You can hear there now, all that air gargling out. In a minute, when the water rises up so far, it will start to spurt out. So I'm gonna get my rag ready. I'm gonna release that a bit. This will obviously take a few seconds because this whole radiator is empty. So at the moment, all this water is rising up the radiator. Obviously this can take a while. So I'm gonna let this run. I'll be back with you in a minute. There we go. I also made the mistake of not turning that round the right way. Something I should have mentioned. So there we go, lesson learned, fresh paint, nice streak of water down it, nice one pouse. Anyway, if you look on there, there's the little nib, and I meant to say, and I should have remembered myself, to point that out towards you. I'll show you what I mean now. There we go, and you can see that stream of water, the radiator is now full. So I'll tighten that off. That's done. Now we're gonna go and take a look at the boiler and repressurize it. We can see there's the pressure gauge and that should really be in the green, this bit ideally here, the tall green bit. Now obviously the pressure's dropped and we're now in the red. Now it's what I should have really done for the purpose of the video, shown you how to put a little bit of water in the radiator, knocked it off, come back up, filled a little bit of water in the boiler, gone back down and so on. Now obviously I just filled the whole radiator up so we're quite low there. So as what I'll have to do is go around now and obviously bleed the other radiators as well. There's bound to be some air in the system. If you wanna see how to bleed the radiators in your house, I've done another video on this and a link to that video will pop up on the screen now. We've got an error there, E119, and that basically means that there's no pressure in the system. So the boiler won't work. So we've got to repressurize it. So if you have a look underneath the boiler, on this particular boiler, you've got a few different valves. If you look on this one, we've got this loop system here. And on this particular one, the two handles are blue. They're not black. On some, I have been told that they're also black, so people get confused. But the way to recognize the loop is it comes out there, across and back in. And on here, you've got two valves. And we basically need to undo both of these, a quarter turn, that's as far as they'll go. So we'll undo that one, quarter turn, and then the other one. And you can now hear that water surging in. You can now see that pressure bar going up. So what I'm gonna do is fill the pressure until it gets to about the top of that green, and then I'm gonna lock off the valves. Then we're gonna go back and we'll go round, bleed all the radiators one by one, and just make sure there's no air left in the system because there's bound to be if I've gone that low with the pressure. So if you go underneath now, so all you have to do is just lock off one valve to stop that going. If we go back up, I can show you that. That's now stopped rising up, and that's about where we want it. If you go back underneath here, it's important to lock off the second valve as well. There we go. And that means the system is now repressurized. Obviously, when we go and bleed the radiators, the pressure is going to drop again. So you need to come back up and keep an eye on it until you get the sweet spot, which is all your radiators full. And you really want that line there or that arrow roughly around the top of that tall green bit there. So hopefully now you can see this is a really simple task that anyone can do. If you're interested in any of the tools I use in the video, I'll put links to those in the description section below. If you find the video useful, then please give it a like and don't forget to subscribe to my channel, press the bell icon for regular notifications. I've been Pouse Around the House. Ta-ta, farewell. <laughs>